Hi guys and welcome to the first in the new series of Time Lapse Tuesday. I'm going to be trying to put time lapses out every Tuesday of tattoos that I did in the previous week. Instead of just having a 10 minute video of a top down time lapse, I'm going to talk you through all the process that I go through during the tattoo, why I'm, why I'm changing certain needles, why I'm using certain inks and where I'm starting and the reasons behind everything that I do in the tattoo. This is to kind of put my money where my mouth is and show you guys that all the tips and tricks, they actually work and they produce the tattoos that I do. If you haven't checked out my work already, head over to my Instagram page. There you'll find all my tattoos and you'll see exactly the sort of work that I do and that'll give you an idea as to where my tips and tutorials are gonna be heading direction-wise. I don't do a lot of color work, so if you're after color tutorials, it's mainly gonna be black and gray. As and when I do color roses, it's just gonna mix things up and it's gonna give you guys a little bit of a heads up as to how I approach color from the eyes of a black and gray artist. So with that being said, let's jump into this tattoo and let's check out this time-lapse. So the first part we've got of the tattoo, um, we've got uh, the stencil that I've already put on. I didn't manage to get a time lapse of me putting the stencil on, mainly because I'm off on a different side because I've got my client stood up, so the legs in the most relaxed position it can be. Uh, so I'm not distorting the tattoo at all. So this is from my client being sat down and we're ready to go um, straight in with the tattoo. So the first thing that I'm doing, I'm technically lining. I normally just use scratch lines. That's mainly just so it holds my stencil, keeps everything nice and sharp, but also means it takes the pressure off me worrying about rubbing off my stencil. These two pieces, top and bottom, the two logos, the Nirvana and the Foo Fighters logo, these are gonna be in color later on in the piece. So technically the, the lines that I'm putting in now are, are proper lines, uh, they're not scratch lines. So at the moment I'm just putting black lines in because there's a big sort of black solid elements. And then for the rest of it, I'm just gonna pop in some, some colored lines once I get closer to, to blocking in those colors. So now instead of using solid black pigment, these lines are now my lightest gray wash. So these are gray lines, scratch lines, temporary lines that are gonna heal out through the process. So you are gonna see them a little bit, but they're gonna be that light that all they're gonna do is just keep the edge nice and crisp and solid. And it just means that you're not going to have any sort of fluffy magged edges and it's going to make your life that little bit easier to get that nice solid edge. So these are those red lines I was on about putting in. I just wanted to get these in at this point just before I start rubbing off too much of my stencil just so I can keep that nice solid circle nice and crisp. Decided that the camera angle wasn't great, mainly because my, my head and my hat tend to get in the way. So I started trying to figure out a better position for the camera which I think I found sort of over my shoulder, which is a, a better sort of angle, especially because I'm working on this bottom piece. For me, being right-handed, I tend to sort of work towards the bottom and sort of bottom left and then work my way over. So what that means is I'm not leaning on any pieces of the stencil and rubbing that off as I'm going through the process. Um, and again, it's just trying to retain as much of the stencil as possible. So I'm just gonna pause this here a sec. So here you can see at the bottom, this is where I've started. This is packing in some of the heavy blacks at the bottom. So what I tend to do with regards to starting my tattoo piece is I try and find an element that is solid black. I think I mentioned this on one of my previous tutorials. Um, what this tends to do for me is it gives me a black point. So at this point, this is solid black pigment packed in pretty much 100% saturation. What that's gonna do is it just means that anything moving forward from this point shouldn't be as dark as that. So any dark tones, any medium tones, if they get anywhere near that black point, I'm gonna start losing the value of the piece uh, and we're gonna start getting tones that aren't true to the reference. So by getting those black bits in first, it gives you a black point um, and it means you're, you're in no danger then of putting dark tones or medium tones in too dark and then finding that you can't get any darker for those heavy blacks. And so by, yeah, by packing those in early, it just means you get a solid, solid finish to the tattoo. And you're not gonna be uh, undersaturated and have a washed out finish by the time it heals. Mainly because black and gray, through the healing process, what you're gonna find is that it's gonna drop sort of 20, 30% through healing. So how dark and contrast it looks on the day, yeah, that's gonna heal out and it's gonna sort of gray onto the skin. You just need to make sure you've got that little bit of extra contrast on the day so that once you lose that little bit through healing, you're still gonna get all those values and retain that nice look to the tattoo that you're you're aiming to achieve. So this bit at the moment, I'm blocking in the beard. Um, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm using a 27 mag. For this, I'm using three, three needles. So I've got a Type 3 liner from Ghost. These are the Ghost hex cartridges that I reviewed in my previous video. 
Check out the link if you want to check out those carts. I've got a 15 curve mag bug pin, and I've got a 27 curve mag bug pin. So um, yeah, I've blocked in the bid with the 27. Now I'm just using the three just to carve out the teeth. So, cause I need to get into those tiny little details, I'm just blocking out those teeth and getting all those heavy shadows in the back of the mouth. What I tend to find with teeth is it's very easy to overdo teeth. So what a lot of, a lot of people tend to do and what I've seen a lot on Instagram is you'll find that people start lining that line between each of the teeth and what it's gonna make it look like is that you've outlined each tooth and it's just not gonna look as it's supposed to look on the tattoo. So what I tend to do is get the shadows in underneath get a light wash just to hit the top of the gum let all that settle let all your stencil go and then if you need to add any shadows to give the curvature of the teeth you can add that in right at the end uh, and that way you're just going to get the most sort of realistic look to those teeth and they're not going to look like uh, like a dodgy cartoon with these big big black heavy lines um, separating each tooth. So now I'm here with a 15, just blocking out all of the, the back of the throat, which is uh, one of the, also the heaviest, blackest parts of the piece, bar all that hair that I already did. So I'm trying to match those tones to make sure that the blacks are black, um, and then everything else just settles back from that. I've blocked in the tongue, and now I'm just sort of working away on the side of the mag, just to re-hit some lighter tones just into the gums, just to give give us that, that drop shadow. I do tend to um, layer up quite a lot with black and gray, so you'll see that I, I tend to go back over areas. Because uh, I work quite light and I don't tend to cause too much trauma to the skin, it allows me to revisit areas once they've settled down, just to give them that extra little bit of saturation to make sure that through the healing, it's gonna have a nice solid finish. Again, still using the 15, just carving out these eyes, getting in the uh, the darkest areas. As the eyes are shut, makes my life that little bit more difficult. For me, I prefer doing an open eye just because I feel like it's easier to get those details in when it's closed and you're trying to carve all those wrinkles in and really get that squint look to it. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, uh, mainly because I don't do a lot of them. Normally the eyes are open. Uh, but obviously this image being this iconic Dave Grohl image, yeah, we uh, yeah you have to have the eyes shut. So I'm still with the i'm with the 27 now so with the 27 i'm blocking in all of the structure of the face so making sure that i'm staying true to my reference and making sure that i'm getting the shadows from underneath the cheekbone and the top of the forehead so we're getting that nice shape and that nice curvature to it uh, we're not having nice you know we're not having a dodgy flat image moving forward from this piece there is going to be a little mini color dave grohl in between so this is obviously pretty much modern day dave grohl on the outside, shattered, and then underneath, we're gonna be having uh, the 90s Dave Grohl from Nirvana, hence why we've got the two logos. Uh, that's gonna be a color piece, so uh, I will be doing a color tutorial as and when we get to uh, to get that piece in later on in the year, which will be interesting, because one, we're gonna see a healed, uh, we're gonna see the healed version of this tattoo, uh, and we're also gonna be able to do a color tutorial portrait, uh, which will be interesting uh, for both me and Jan you guys as, uh, Watching back these time lapses of how I work is really interesting to see how, how I approach my tattoos, how I move around the piece, why I choose certain parts to do first and, and so on and so forth. And for me, I find it's a great learning tool for myself. So if you never time lapse yourself tattooing, uh, it's definitely worth doing just to, uh, just to see how you do stuff and how you can personally improve. Um, so at this point, we're blocking out the black in the Foo Fighters logo. Um, just making sure that's nice and solid. Again, a great tip for blocking out black areas is once you've blocked it out black, get your rinse bottle, rinse it over the top of the black and let it let the water sit on top of the skin. So what that's gonna act is almost like a magnifying glass. So once that's sat on top, you'll be able to see any little bits that you've missed within that black uh, and you'll be able to just go back in and pack those out and make sure everything's super saturated. With black, sometimes it's really hard to see whether you have completely packed in um, all of the uh, all of the color, but, uh, but yeah, just a bit of water wash over the top, uh, and you're gonna be able to see. So at this point, my battery ran out, but we did take a little bit of a break. Uh, the next thing that I did, I just blocked out all of that red, so uh, nothing too interesting. Again, just pack it out, water wash over the top to make sure the red is completely saturated. Red's not sometimes a little bit tricky because obviously you're irritating the skin, so the skin's gonna be a red-ish color anyway, so sometimes it's hard to see if you've missed any bits, which through healing, you're gonna end up with little patches missing. So like I say, you just wash a bit of water over the top, have a look, and you'll see any gaps. Uh, you can just pack those in. So, so we went and had a little bit of a break, had a bit of a stretch, 
and it for me felt like a very natural place to to have a little rest and we like i say we packed out the red you can see that it's all packed in at the bottom so now i moved over to the other side of the face so this piece was quite interesting in the sense of i literally had two sides to the portrait the fact that we had the split down the middle so it gave us a very natural place to have a little break and a bit of lunch uh, let my client refuel and get ready for the afternoon so i'm basically starting the process again um so the only thing that I slightly regretted with this piece was getting the red in at the point that I did. Adding red or any color into a black and gray piece, you run the risk of muddying up that color. So as you're adding more black into the piece and you're wiping across it, potentially that black's gonna stick into the uh, into the, the, the area that you packed the color and it's gonna go brown or, or you're gonna get black and grays all mixed into that. The best thing to do if you do do that is just try to wipe away from the color area I wasn't too massively concerned, uh, mainly because red's quite a strong pigment, so it, it is quite hardy, so it does take a lot to uh, to really muddy it up. If it was, say, like the yellow that's gonna go in at the top, um, I'd have to be super, super careful, making sure that I'm wiping everything away away from that color. Again, I don't tend to cause too much trauma when I tattoo. It's normally if you've uh, caused a lot of trauma to the skin and you've broken it up quite a lot, that it will suck in any ink that you wipe over the top. I've never really had too much problems with getting color in early, especially with like color pieces. I can get white in quite early and not muddy those up. Again, it is good practice just to make sure that you're you're not wiping over the top of that color. So same process as the other side with regards to the black and gray. I packed in all the black at the bottom, um, got that in nice and solid. So I've got that black point and then it's just a case of just working my way through and working through the tones. Bulk of this bit was done with the 27 just because I had all that big bulk of hair to get in uh, and I wanted to make sure I've got all those nice strands. The great thing about mags, um, they're very versatile in the sense of you can have them flat and cover a big area, you can have them on the side and in essence you've got like a two mag um, in the sense you've just got those two rows of uh, needles and if you've got it in a slight angle you can just catch that one row so you can get a very fine line tattooed into the skin. So for me doing hair, if I've got the mag on the side, it means I can just get that nice wispy look to the hair by literally just dragging the mag on the side and it's just gonna give you those nice hairline, little scratchy lines, uh, which is just gonna look like, like a nice sort of hair look. So if, again, if you checked out my Instagram work, you'll see that I tend to put a lot of these lens flares in, which are basically just big circles. Uh, I find they're really simple, simple, add to a piece they give you um a little bit of something else that makes some like a, a sort of a boring part of the piece a little bit more interesting so it's the same sort of concept as when i add water droplets onto a piece you can see that i'm blocking it in now but what it also allows me to do is just create a slightly bigger background without adding a technically uh, add, adding any more elements to the piece so there's basically nothing in those little pieces so it gives you uh, an open part of the tattoo so if you've got a big heavy black area that's why I tend to put them so I'm not having to pack in too much black onto my client and it just stops me from just having a big black blob and makes something a little bit more interesting, especially doing um, face portraits. Again, you potentially if you were taking a photo, you could have a bit of a glare, which is what these are. And it just adds that little bit of something else to the, uh, to the tattoo. So that's the bulk of that side of the face done. Uh, I'm now blocking the, uh, the Nirvana logo in solid black. So again, just taking my time with the black. Um, it's very easy to want to rush. Um, packing in solid color is a bit of a time consuming part. You want to be quite methodical with it so you get in that solid saturation. Uh, the last thing you want is a heel to come back with lots of little patches that you're just going to have to touch up. Very hard to touch up patches in, an, in a tattoo because as you start tattooing those patches, they're going to look a lot stronger than the other bits. So you, you're going to end up tattooing most of it again and doing the whole thing a second time, which isn't a bad thing. You're going to get a very saturated tattoo uh, for your client after that, but it means you've got twice the effort and twice the time spent on a tattoo. So if you get it right first time, obviously that's the uh, that's the best way to do it. So again, going back to making sure that you're taking your time and really packing that color in. This is how long it would have taken me to do the red. Packing color and packing black should take about the same amount of time. Where if you're packing a lighter color, say like yellows and things like that, for me, it's always been quite important to keep into your head how long it should take you to do that if it was black. Uh, with yellows especially, because you tend to get a lot more in the way of sort of like bleeding, mainly because you can see it a lot more because it's a lighter tone and it'll go a bit more orange. It's very easy to think that you need to re-hit it uh, and hit it a lot harder, whereas it should be the same sort of time as the black. Uh, so I just sprayed a load of Bactine onto the tattoo. Uh, Bactine for me is a lifesaver. One, it just allows my client to sit that a little bit longer. But the great thing for me personally 
is that it helps take a bit of the redness out, helps to settle everything down, keep everything a little bit more sensible. And when you get to the end of the tattoo, with that redness dropped a little bit, you're allowed to see any little parts that need another little wash over the top just to make sure that they're um, that everything's super super saturated and it's not just skin irritation back team for me towards the end of the day so once i'm into like the last sort of couple of hours is when i'll start putting it on so once i'm at a point where my stencil's gone because back team will destroy your stencil yeah i start blasting that on it's a little bit stingy for your client even though there's a big sticker on the front that says no sting but most clients will find that it's a little bit burny but once that's all settled down yeah your client's gonna gonna really thank you for it they're gonna sit a lot better it's not gonna numb the tattoo by any means but it, it will knock it back to almost how it feels at the start of the day so it'll take away that sunburny feeling and hopefully take away a little bit of the red obviously it depends on the body part and the client how much that's going to really affect it but yeah for me just if your client's wriggling around in pain it's just going to make your life that little bit more difficult um, it's going to make you want to rush get the tattoo done whereas yeah you shouldn't be rushing a tattoo at all it should all be you know, as long as it takes. So into white. So as everyone knows, white is the not the most enjoyable part of the tattoo. You're going back over everything. You're hitting it with your nice fine needles again. And yeah, it's nice and sharp. So again, the back team is just gonna give you that little bit of a helping hand, both as an artist and a client. So I'm just packing in the white in the Foo Fighters logo. It didn't necessarily need the white in the bottom logo because the skin gap that I'd left had created enough contrast that it would have been fine. And there's every chance once this heals, it's not gonna to be too dissimilar from the skin tone. Uh, but what I find with doing things, like, especially when you've got a very, um, very fine little skin gap between stuff, is if you leave it over time, by having no pigment in that gap, every chance that that line's just gonna close up and eventually completely disappear. If you pack in that white and re-hit that white in, even if you know that it's gonna be very similar to the skin tone, just by depositing some ink into that gap, it's gonna give you a barrier between those two other elements, which means they're not gonna to spread together and it's just gonna hold and stand the test of time just that little bit longer. So back into the face, I'm sure this feels like for my client. This is all stuff we did four, uh, four or five hours ago. And I'm going back in with a very, very fine liner and re-hitting all these elements. For me with white, I like to really make sure it's packed in there nice and solid. There's no point in putting your client through white if you're just gonna like wash it in, not really pack it in hard. Uh, the Bactine allows me to do that. But even if I've not used Bactine, it's still important that it's, that it's properly deposited in the skin. I use a combination of liners and mags when I'm putting white in. So I find that shading white into the tattoo can really smooth out areas, give you that real nice soft airbrush look. You can see how I packed a load into the top of that cheek there. It is quite messy. I do tend to go through a lot of paper towels when I'm doing white just because it's a lot thicker. And as you can see then, I tend to give it like a proper wipe down. It's just, yeah, being a thicker pigment, it really, uh, yeah, it's really, really thick and heavy and it is a bit more hard work wiping, especially because I'm used to working mainly with black and gray, which you can wipe off the skin a lot easier. But yeah, with white, it's just that little bit thicker. So you saw a few minutes ago that I just blasted on a bit more back team just to make everything settle down a little bit more. So just having that final look just to see uh, if I was happy with everything and make sure everything's really punched in. At this point, I was pretty, pretty happy. I'd nailed in a lot of white in those teeth and really carved them out. There's just a few moments where I did have I had to step back, have a look, go and stand up, just to see if I needed to add any more elements. I was pretty happy with it, especially because we're going back into it to get that color piece in. I can always nip over any little bits just to sharpen stuff up. So that was the time lapse from start to finish, exactly how I do the tattoo. And here's the finished tattoo. Looking at the tattoo, obviously we can see how much I carved the white into those teeth, how nice and crisp they look, but without having those big sort of goofy lines between each individual tooth, uh, which is what we didn't want. The scratch lines that I put at the start, you can see how that's given me that nice crisp edge to that shattered look, but without looking like I'd put a big heavy line through. So like I say, light wash around the edges, that's gonna give you that nice crisp look. The blacks look really nice and solid. Black and gray is just giving us those nice sort of wrinkles and folds, especially in the eye and the big sort of, uh, the big crease on the side of the face. We're really getting that sort of taut look over the gums, obviously with the screaming sort of face. It's important to, to show that tension that you've got in the mouth. The color looks really nice and packed out, really saturated and especially the black at the top. And so I'm pretty happy with uh, with both of those. And apart from that, everything else looks pretty settled. So around the outside, there isn't much red. The, the leg doesn't look too angry. That's gonna be a combination of working quite light into the skin, not causing too much trauma 
but also the back team, that's gonna help take away that redness quite a lot. I've added a few little drop shadows just onto some of the edges, just so it lifts up that shattered look. So once we get the color piece in, that's gonna sit underneath. That black and gray is just gonna mix in with, that, with whatever color I put over the top of it, and those drop shadows are just gonna give us that sort of under and over look to everything. And that's pretty much it. Clients that really well, and yeah, all in all, very happy with the tattoo. So there you go, guys. That was my time-lapse tattoo. Hopefully you found something interesting from this. I definitely do. Every time I look at my time-lapse tattoos, I feel like I can analyze my work a little bit more, see what I like, what I didn't like, what I do differently, and see exactly how I work and whether I can figure out a better and more productive way of approaching the tattoo the next time I do one. So if you don't follow me already on Instagram, make sure to head over there and check out my Insta, drop me a follow. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, make sure to click the subscription button and the little bell icon to get notified of all my latest videos. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed the time-lapse. And with all that being said, I will see you next week for another time-lapse. Peace.